Good morning. Good morning. I'm Tanisha Thomas, or do you want to say his name? Mm -hmm. Thomas is nurse for today. Um, so questions that are common, like what to expect when you come in for a transplant? It's a very broad question, and it's really hard to kind of um, categorize it or limit it for you because things change on a daily basis. Um, we can tell you, depending on what kind of transplant you're gonna get, we can tell you which days your numbers are gonna go down. We can tell you that you're gonna need blood, you're gonna need platelet, you're gonna need other supportive care, but the severity of the care, it varies from patient to patient. And when I say it varies from patient to patient, what I mean is that each patient comes in with a past medical history. They have a baseline, and so we have to plan for potential um, complications that are related to their past medical history, not necessarily the transplant, but what the transplant can trigger with those past medical um, conditions that a patient may have. So what are some of the, what are some common things that are common overall amongst um, allo patients? For the allo patient, depending on what chemotherapy they were conditioned with, I could tell you that common things, you're going to need blood, you're going to need platelets, you're going to need electrolyte replacement, you're going to probably have a bout of diarrhea, you're going to have mouth sores. The severity, again, it depends on which chemotherapy we conditioned you with. And when we say condition, meaning to get your body prepared for the stem cells, we give you um, very strong doses of chemotherapy to kill whatever potential cells are left back in order to give you the new stem cells. So how do you know when the new stem cells are starting to grow or take over? Well, we know it's a process called engraftment and what we're looking for is the white blood cell number to start coming back. So your right blood cells, the normal number is anywhere from about four to 11 is the normal range. If it's too low, we say you're neutropenic. If it's too high, we might say, what's going on? Do you have an infection going on somewhere? And that's just a general definition outside of oncology. What's um, neutropenic? I'm gonna tell you. So neutropenia, so with the white blood cells, going back to how do we know when your new cells are working in the process called engraftment. Mm -hmm. So with the chemotherapy that we give to condition the cells, we're gonna knock out the white blood cells. It's gonna go down to zero. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it says less than 0 0.2 for days. Yeah. We know that the cells start to work when those numbers start to come back up. So we saw 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 1.3, 2.5, 4.0. And sometimes we help in that process by giving a medication called it's a growth factor is the terminology for it. And what it does is it stimulates the bone marrow to produce mature white blood cells. So that means no more of Thomas's old cells are there, only the new cells? That's what that means, yes. Okay. Now you asked what, is what are neutrophils? What does neutropenia mean? So we spoke about the white blood cell itself as a whole number. Mm -hmm. Your neutrophils make up anywhere from 30 to 70% of this whole white blood cell number. There are other numbers that we don't look at per se. We have eosinophils, basophils, a whole bunch of other fills. But oh. that has nothing to do with you asked about the neutrophils. Right. right. So the neutrophils are, um, they're actually the ones that produce the mature white blood cells themselves. So when we say a cancer patient is neutropenic, mm -hmm. we say this number is too low, the neutrophil is too low, and that's, remember, your neutrophils is your immune system. That's your defense mechanism. That's your military that's protecting your body there. Okay. So when you don't have no neutrophils, anybody could just come on, border patrol can't stop them, nothing. Right. And that's what makes you um, vulnerable to any type of bacteria, viruses, anything. Hence the reason why when we come into your rooms, we wear masks. Mm -hmm. So though the hospital is no longer required to wear masks, for our department, we do. Okay. Because we want to protect you. So there are times where simple things are that you and I can fight. Because of his transplant process, he may not be able to fight it. Mm. He's more susceptible to the simplest of things. Mm -hmm. And so you, you find that we frequently do a lot of blood, you know, because we're looking to see what's going on. Oh, we're yeah. overlooking certain things. So there's constant blood work being done different tests just to make sure that we're not waking up something that was there latent or that something that 
the general population can tolerate, but he can't, mm. if that helps. Okay. Um, let me check this time really quick. Thank you so much. You're we welcome. appreciate it. Welcome. So, is that you all you want? No. <laughs> is that I all you want the people to know, Thomas? You want them to you you won't have any more questions for her? Did she I answer them appropriately? Okay. Thank you. Let me take it 